Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome everybody who may be watching Facebook live stream, our media members, those that might be looking at this later on YouTube. Today, I was inspired to preach about what is first in your life. Think about that for a moment. What is first in your life? You know, one of the things that we need to make first in our life is God our Father. God our Father. Tomorrow's Father's Day. Let's start with that focus. Make that first in our lives. You know, I want everyone to know how great God is. Mm. He's great. This week was a difficult week for my wife and I. We moved. And I recognized God's greatness during that endeavor. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we were guided to give us the endurance and the energy, and we were blessed abundantly to make this difficult task accomplishable. Now, in order to live life to its fullest and to experience all of God's blessings, then God must be first in your life. God should not be grouped in with all the many other things that you've got going on. It should be your priority. The problem for most people today is that God is not in the center of their life. And many couples suffer in their marriage because they don't put God first. Last Saturday, my wife and I were at a wedding. Friends of my daughter, but... She calls us aunt and uncle. And I was very impressed with the pastor. Throughout his entire wedding service, he reiterated time and time again that their marriage would only be successful if they had God in that marriage, putting Christ in the center of that marriage. And I pray that this couple will let those words resonate and they understand that. In my travels, I have had opportunity many times to talk to secular people. And by this I mean people who say they believe in God, but they may not necessarily go to or belong to a church or any organized religion. Which today, organized religion happens to be a dirty word. They try and take the religion and that the worship out of everything that we do. When I talk to people about God, many people tell me they just don't have enough time for God. Well, guess what? It gives us all the same amount of time. We have to take that time. And that could be because there are too many other priorities and activities that push God out of your daily life. Basically, what I am hearing is that God is not first. I believe in God, but i got other things to do first. This is because people will always make time for what matters most to them. Sporting event, hanging out with friends, going to the movies. That is what they, is important to them. They're going to make time for that. So what happens is, well, obviously God must not be important to them. Because they're not making time for God. Now, I'm not saying that sporting events and hanging out with friends and, and doing these things are wrong. They're not. But they are not to take a priority over God. Because if they do, perhaps they are wrong. God makes it clear over and over in Scripture that He belongs first in our lives. When I was growing up, we had a room in our house called the living room. Remember that term, the living room, right? Mm -hmm. We were not allowed to be in that room to play. It was reserved for special times and guests. So I always wondered why it is called the living room. I think the room was misnamed. <laughs> this room should be called the visiting room for special guests. <laughs> We also misname God and call Him our Lord and God, but when He is not living in our lives day to day, He is like the visiting room. 
We visit him perhaps once a week when we go to church or when we pray at meals. And we just forget about him. Forget about him. I have the Holy Spirit with me and I think about God all the time through everything that I'm doing, through the course of all the activities I had going on this week. I did not allow Satan to come in and destroy my joy of the Lord. I was able to witness to new people, to allow them to know that I have the Lord and I have that spirit. I have time for God. Many of us don't spend our time in His presence. True. So many people who call themselves Christians forget about putting God first. They leave the presence. He's in the visiting room. I've heard me preach about this before. When I wake up in the morning, the very first thing I do when I started doing this just this morning again is to look out the window and recognize Him first thing and thank Him for all of His blessings. And as I see the mountains and the trees, I thank Him for the beauty of His creation. I take time for Him right from the get-go. And I think about what he did for me. He died on the cross for my sins. Many people forget what he did for you. He took, he took the burden. He paid the price. He took it to the cross. And we need to take it to the cross as well. When I take time to recognize him first thing, everything else I'm about to do, and actions for the day become easier. No matter how stressful they are, they're easier. When he is not first in the day, we do not benefit from any of his blessings. He wishes to provide blessings to us all the time. But if we don't recognize him, how are we going to recognize the blessings? Someday we will find out all the blessings we actually missed out on. And in Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 33, all heard this before, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Here he promises us that when we put him first and his kingdom first, that all these things will be given to you. What are all these things? These things are all the blessings that He gives us. These things are eternal life and salvation with Him. All these things, these material things that we have, are His. He blessed us with it. We came into this world with nothing, and we're going out with nothing. That's just how it is. He blessed us with these things. They're not ours. They're His. These things are the necessities of life that Jesus spoke about in Matthew, chapter 6 and verses 25 and 32. The other problem today is we worry. We're missing boxes last night. We're worried about that. It says, do not worry. Give it to God and pray. It will work out. In verse 25, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, or what you will wear. It is, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Life is spiritual. Life is the spirit. And he will provide for us. Don't worry about it. In verse 26, it says, look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or store up in barns, and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them every day. Are you not so much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? It's right there, verse 26. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow? Do they not labor or spin? Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, 
which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown in a fire, will not much more clothe you, you of little faith. Do not worry about things, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows what that you need them. You think about it. I can go out and buy the best of this, and that designer or whatever, and we worry about looking good, and we worry about all the, what are we going to eat, and this and that. Don't worry about it. God will provide. He'll provide what He believes you can handle. Satan, on the other hand, wants you to have an ego. And he wants you to just be up here and put God way down here. He wants you to think about all those material things. But really, God blesses us with that. So when you do not put God first, you worry. You worry about everything. And you are missing out on all his blessings. Now, I am not saying that seeking God first will eliminate problems or issues in your life. Seeking God first, Satan is going to constantly put other problems and issues in your life because he wants to pull you away. But seek God first. By seeking Him first, it means we will be equipped to overcome and get through those problems because your life is now aligned under God's authority and His rule. Don't be misled that by putting God first means you can sit back and wait for Him to provide. Uh-uh, don't work that way. you got to go out. He gives you opportunity. Take advantage of it. He gives you stamina. Use it. It, is, it means that by putting Him first, He will provide us with guidance and wisdom to face all the challenges in our lives. To embrace all the opportunities He gives us. God gives us what we need, when we need it, provided we put Him first and trust in Him. You've got to trust in Him. There are many things that complete, there are many things that compete, excuse me, for our attention and devotion. Our jobs, our kids, our spouses, and our hobbies. These are some of the distractions of a worldly life. We have to be careful not to let them become more important or more of a priority than our relationship with God. The Bible tells us God is a jealous God. He's very jealous. He wants us first. He wants our attention first. He blessed us with our wife or our husband. He blessed us with our children. But He is the priority over all of that. Because without Him first, all these other things become maybe aggravations. So every day you must decide to serve God with your whole heart and make Him first in your life. Your soul will prosper and your joy and peace will increase. Remember to lean on Him more than anything else. And tell Him, God, I can't do this without you. God, I need you to guide me. He doesn't expect you to live for Him in your own strength or ability. He understands when you make mistakes. He will forgive. If you mess up, don't be discouraged and let it hold you back. I know people that mess up not, they get discouraged and just say, you know what, forget about it all. But if you keep God first and keep going, God will give you the grace to do what you need to do. One day at a time, you and God together can do anything. That reminds me of a song. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. Mm -hmm. We've played it here at church before. <laughs> One day at a time. Don't worry about tomorrow. We don't know what it's going to bring. Take one day at a time. Today's the day. Let Him be first in your life. Many believers have relaxation 
and entertainment so soothes their minds. They want to relax, they want to be entertained, they want to be distracted by entertainment. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. But enjoy the life that God has given to you. He gave you that TV set to watch. Thank Him for it. You must be wise with all of your choices when you turn that TV on. Am I going to watch something that's not pleasing in God's eyes? Or am I going to watch something that's edifying and lifting up? Because there's a lot of media out there on TV, a lot of Christian channels out there that help you relax. Relax with the Lord. God is first in life's enjoyments and He'll allow you to pursue those things that help you relax. We have plenty of happy times when we get to heaven. When we get to heaven, things will be better. Can I get an amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. If not God first, and then we get... If it's not God first, and when we get on with the rest of our life, we don't fit God in. Don't try and say, I squeeze you in here. Rather, God is all in. You have to have them all in. He is in everything, in every way, in every part of our daily living. We should live every day with an awareness of the presence and the power of God. In Acts 17, 28, For in Him we live and move and have our being. God is worthy of our attention in everything we do, everything we say, everything we think. As believers, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, prompting us towards righteousness in our attitudes and behavior. As we allow the Holy Spirit to move in us, we can't help but put God first in everything. Amen. Amen. Amen.